Hey all, so in this video I'm going to be Old Man Max, Grumpy Grumpy. Uh, at least in the topic that I choose to discuss, or at least some of you might think that. But a couple of days ago I was on Crack.com, uh, which is a comedy website that I frequent. I like it, uh, it's very funny. Um, and they, well they had an article basically, it was something like... Uh, <clears throat> five alternative medicine theories uh, or therapies that aren't as bullshit as you may think. Now, I have a personal kind of beef with alternative medicine because I just think they go under the radar way too much. I think it does a lot of damage because, first of all, it's generally useless and costs a lot of money. Um, it's basically a con job in most cases. And secondly... Um, it actually warps people's idea of how science works because if you look at the claims made by someone that does alternative medicine they do them in a way that's bullshit um, and, but it seems plausible if you don't know how the scientific process is supposed to work and so they put out there a model of how science works that doesn't correspond to how it must work for it to actually work in producing something which is more likely to be true than just guessing. Now, um, this article, unfortunately, was pretty much what I feared it would be, which was it listed some therapies. Um, the first two were acupuncture and aromatherapy. Um, and it said, well, you know, this is how it's supposed to work. Uh, that's funny, haha. But actually, here's the medical hypothesis for why it might work. And here's some evidence that it probably works. Um, now, the hypothesis and the evidence part is what I have the problem with. So, you know, you can make a hypothesis, obviously, about anything. Um, and then the evidence was just a link to some article. Uh, in, in one case, it was just a Wall Street Journal article. In another case, it was this dodgy website that had a link to a paper on it. And the problem I had with that is that's how every alternative medicine shill or anyone in the history of mankind that wanted to pretend like they were sciency has done it. Uh, you dig up some study, the one study that shows it, um, or you conduct your own study with questionable methodology and then you uh, use that as a reference um, without presenting any kind of in-depth analysis or you just go straight out and present something like a Wall Street Journal article which obviously is not a scientifically valuable source uh, at all and then maybe if I go to the Wall Street article then maybe they have some references but then I have to go and check those up as well so it's just not a good method if you want to inform someone now I basically complained in the comment section and I got the response don't be such an ass it says comedy up there don't you see it uh, leave us alone, leave comedy alone, uh, and that was pretty much um, the response that I got. Now, the problem I have with that is, I know it says comedy up there, I was aware I was on a comedy website, um, but this article was read, as all crack.com articles are, by hundreds of thousands of people, um, well, you know, probably hundreds of thousands, I mean it's got hundreds of thousands of views, how many exactly, you know, uh, tens to hundreds of thousands of people. Now, the theory is supposedly is that if it says comedy somewhere on the webpage or even in the title, as long as they state that they're comedy, it will leave people completely unaffected. They might laugh, but they won't believe anything in the article. It will have no impact on them. And I call BS on that. <laughs> it's going to have a big impact on them because they're going to treat it as an information source, whether you put comedy in the title or not. Uh, as a matter of fact, most people are unlikely to go ask an expert about alternative therapies. People are unlikely to go to some researcher and ask them. You know, There's an excellent book which uh, you should read. I'll link to it in the underbar if I can remember. It's called Bad Science. And that's part of <laughs> the... Um, that's one of the uh, inspirations I have for having this problem with alternative medicine. Um, but there, there are people out there that are trying to debunk this stuff. But generally, the more popular kind of sources uh, are the ones that people go to. And most of those aren't uh, 
qualified scientists or professionals of any kind. Um, they're entertainers, they're comedians, they're Oprah Winfrey, they're Crack.com. Uh, so if that's the majority of the, uh, you know, if that makes up the majority of the information people are receiving and that information is misleading or wrong, then people are going to be misinformed, right? And being misinformed is bad for them because they're going to get suckered into stuff. And it's bad for society because if we have a misinformed society, then it's going to make bad decisions, especially in democracies, right? Um, and it's not just that they're going to be misinformed about alternative medicine or, in this case, an aromatherapy and acupuncture. They're going to be misinformed after this article as to how the scientific method works. And that's going to be bad. They're going to think it's just this thing where people just do one study and then that proves it for sure or not. And next time they see two contradicting studies, their brains will explode and they'll be like, oh, someone must have been lying there. But that's actually how it works most of the time. You need a lot of evidence. Um, so that's why I have this big issue. I think that in fact, no matter what label you put on it, when you're putting out information, you carry responsibility to make that information accurate. Uh, and the same thing, by the way, goes to Jon Stewart, whose show I love. But he also has the cop out that he's just a comedy show and he tells people not to take him seriously. Yet he is the most watched news source, right? So he can't have that cop out. Now, you know, it's all fair and good for him to say that he's a comedy show. Um, but if he's the most watched news source, then he is going to have that impact. And there's an easy way for people who want to do comedy to avoid getting into a situation where they might be causing this kind of damage, which is not to talk about factual things, right? You can talk about airplane food. That's fine. You can't really go wrong there. But if you're going to make factual claims, I don't care under what label you do it. You better be right. Otherwise, I'm going to call you out. And that doesn't, you know, it's not that I want people to go to court and get an injunction about against crack.com for spreading misinformation and shut them down. Not at all. I just want people to call them out for their bullshit when something they factually say is bullshit. I want people to call out Jon Stewart when something he says is bullshit, just like I want people to call me out when I say something that's bullshit and so on and so forth. And I want people to go into everything with a rational thinking mind uh, with a critical mind and just think about things uh, because otherwise they're going to that open mind thing what was it called Sagan said uh, have an open mind but not so open that your brains fall out I don't know whether it was called Sagan or someone else but it's a pretty good saying and you have to be careful even when it comes to comedy because things also have a first of all it's going to consciously people are going to look at that and say oh that sounds reasonable I'll believe that subconsciously it still has an effect if you don't challenge it it will have an impact on the way you view the world and so I just think that we should actually be uh, demanding more of people in general uh, and that includes comedians there should be no special pass I think we should protect comedians and every other form of free speech from um, being shut down or silenced by authority right that's very important it's like in the old days people made caricatures of the king and the king put them in prison and people got pretty pissed off and that was a good thing and we should be pissed off if that happens but it's different from when the king or the president comes and puts you in prison for saying something wrong to actually as a private individual just speaking out and saying no what you're doing there is wrong you're you know you're making a factual claim the way you're presenting it is wrong and you're actually contributing to misinformation being spread through society as I said this might make me sound like old man Max uh, picking on poor comedy writers uh, but I do think personally I think it's an important point uh, it's an important point and you can also you can look at the the presentation of something if it's clearly just comedy and it's surreal and stupid like it's a Monty Python sketch then that doesn't apply but if at the core it's also something that's informative in a way like that article was or like everything John Stewart says is because he does talk about current events and I think it's fair to apply that standard